Welcome to the Higher Grounds Podcast. This podcast is a medium by which we do this. Very simply, we educate, equip, and we edify the saint to serve his generation as David did his. Thank you for being with us. This is our second episode. We appreciate the response from last week, and we encourage you to like us and link us to everyone you know and to get your pastor involved in regard to uh, promoting this and we're going to see God do some great, great, great things through the Higher Grounds podcast. We appreciate God's goodness in our life. Thank God for these men who are blessing us and helping us and assisting us in the Higher Grounds podcast. Well, we've got a new face on the team today. This is Pastor Chad Watson. He's the pastor of the Gloryland Baptist Church in Hartsville, South Carolina. I've known Brother Chad. How long have we known one another? We've known one another probably 15, 16 15, years. Yeah, I guarantee. 15 or 16 years. He had, he had grown up in our area, and I guess when I met you, you were still pastoring yeah. in Washington. Yeah. Yes, sir. He pastored in Washington, D.C., and uh, came back this way and started a church basically in the home area. And the God's blessed at the Gloryland Baptist Church. What? When did you plant the church? In 2004. 2004 planted the church yes, and uh, tell what God's done in these these many years there at Glory Land. Well, we started in a little restaurant building in September 2004 and just me and my wife and we were sent out of our home church to plant Glory Land Baptist Church and we began to knock doors and see God save folks Amen. and add to the church and it's been 14 years. Brother, God's been good to us. We've been able to build uh, buy 15 acres of land and build our own facility, our own building, and we're debt, debt free, debt, 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 free. debt free for the glory of God. Amen. So, but the Lord's really been blessing our young folks. Really on fire for God. We've seen a lot of young folks saved in their uh, low, in their early 20s, late teenage years, and and uh, just really getting on fire for God. It's been very, very refreshing. Amen. 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 And about battles, battles, many battles, yes. many battles. <laughs> Yeah. Building and battling, building and battling. You, you, and here's what a lot of, and I know we have a lot of young preachers that are visiting the podcast, yes. and we're glad that you're here. But if 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 you think that you're going to uh, pastor a church and be involved in ministry and just kind of you know skate through this thing unscathed, uh, you and you you and you got the wrong idea. Oh yeah. Uh, right. so if you're going to pastor, particularly in this generation, and it's changed, you know, in the on you know, the 30 years I've been at this, yes. it's changed immensely. Yep. Um, but uh, you're, you're going to have a lot of struggles and a lot of battles along the way, a lot of heartaches. Uh, you're going to have to uh, develop the height of a rhinoceros, and you know you're going to have to develop yes, the, the constitution of a rhinoceros and and have a have a heart like a dove. I mean, yeah. that's what you're going to have Absolutely. to do Absolutely. if you're going to make it. Yes, and I, I, I appreciate yes, men. Uh, that start works and brother poindexter started the lighthouse baptist church north campus and this this church uh Gloryland baptist church started by brother chad both brother stephen and i both uh took churches that had already been planted i'm the third pastor at galilee in, since 1974 so it's a great church our, our church uh we didn't we didn't start but sometimes it, it felt that way in a sense we had we had some members that right that had been there for years That's family exactly and those kinds of things but really, at our place, is if, if you go there now, most of our members are first-generation Christian. Right. And so that's been a joy, you know, with people coming in and they don't have a lot of background and things to fight through. They're just ready to learn and, and right. serve God. And it's just been kind of amazing to watch, Amen. God, watch Amen. God do that. So, and, and you know, nice. when Brother Stephen took that church, <clears throat> uh, you know, it had gone through several pastors. Sure. And uh, had had a ups and downs. And, you know, I, 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 you know, I didn't really know personally. I thought to myself, I wonder how this thing's going to go. God's blessed yeah, I mean, in a great way. And, be good and I, you know, of course, when when you do, um, you know, animal funerals and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> great induction. <laughs> I think that might need to be saved for another episode. Yeah, we, we probably we, got time. Oh no, 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 we don't have time for all that. Uh, uh, but uh, we will cover that on, a, on another episode. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. But what we're here today to cover and deal with is the subject of the pastor and his mighty men conference this conference is held at the glory land baptist church god birthed this idea uh, in the heart of brother watson several years ago tell us about the pastor's mighty men conference brother 
Well, the pastor in his Mighty Men Conference is a, it's more than a men's meeting. Yeah. It's more of a meeting that is geared towards bonding the relationship between the men of the church and their pastor, and that pastor and his men. Um, God birthed this uh, and really burdened my heart for this, uh, I guess, maybe nine years ago. And I, uh, I think this will be our ninth year having the Pastor and His wow. Mighty Men Conference. But uh, as, we, as I read the scriptures and as we look through the Word of God, I see where Jesus spent His entire ministry pouring His life into a handful of men. That's right. And, That's right. And you look at the Apostle Paul, he spent his entire ministry pouring his life into a handful of men. And I know when we read the Word of God, we read about the great things that David did. But we all know that without those 37 men that the Bible calls mighty men, oh, yeah, absolutely. David would not have gotten nearly the ink that he got in the Scriptures had it not been for those mighty men. Yep. No doubt. David cir encircled himself and in, in, in put men around him that helped him to be a more efficient and more effective leader. Mm -hmm. And of course, that's not a secular principle. That's a biblical principle that's exactly to right. surround yourself by men that help you to be a better pastor, a better leader, more effective, to get more done for the glory of God. Yeah. And the truth is, there's a lot of churches that feel like that they uh, maybe their pastor's been there for many years, and they feel like that they would like to have a better pastor or a more efficient pastor, and they don't realize that God has put in their hands the potential to help their pastor be a more effective pastor. Right. It's, the Bible right. says this, in the book of Proverbs we read where the Bible talks about a wise woman buildeth her house, but a foolish woman plucketh it down with her hands. Right. And what God's saying is there is that if a wife is wise and she wants a stronger husband, better husband, she has been given the potential to build him, to build yeah. his masculinity, to build his leadership, to build his, uh, whatever it may be, to build his spirituality. She can build it or she can pluck it down. Yeah. Right. And the right. answer to a church being stronger and more effective is for those men of the church to understand their ability to strengthen the hands of their pastor. Sure. And that's our theme this year for the Pastors Mighty Men Conference is what Nehemiah said, Nehemiah 6, 9, when he said, Oh God, strengthen my hands. And God uses yes. wow. other men to strengthen the hands Absolutely. of their pastor. Absolutely. I found this to be true, Brother Wells, that uh, a church uh, will never be stronger than the relationship between those men and their pastor. It will never rise higher than that relationship. Yep, right. And so that's the reason God birthed in our heart the pastor who's made me many years ago. It's great. And I have attended and I have had the privilege of speaking in that conference on, I don't know, a good handful of times. And I, I really feel like the Lord has used used you know what the Lord laid on my heart to help the men yes, uh, at the different times I yes, sir. the Lord let us be there. Last last year, I don't know how many men you had there. But you, you completely packed the venue out. Yes. How many men do you think were, were at the conference last year? We fed um, over 400 men on wow. Saturday. It's unbelievable. And yeah. I'm not sure Sorry. how many we had, probably uh, maybe even more than that there on Friday night. I know it was... We I would say there were better than 600 different men and boys that were a part of that conference would be my guess. Just it was... Being there on both evenings. Definitely a lot. There's yeah. no doubt about it. I think uh, I think we're bumping 500 as far as numbers are concerned on a consistent basis in that conference. It's grown every year. Right. And uh, we're just uh, using every ounce of our facility to get the men in there. So, it's, well, Mike, you did a good job last year preaching in that conference. Absolutely, yes, sir. Uh, that that message was tremendous, and I I uh, appreciate uh, what you said there and. You said it just exactly the way I told you to say it. Yes, yes absolutely. I did. I did. I followed my script very well. I did very well. Thank you for the lot of recognition. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sure he's given you all, yeah, all the royalties. Yes, yes, yes. 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 <laughs> absolutely. Tell about the conference for you and your guys. Well, I'll be honest with you. And I was talking with Pastor Watson earlier. Um, you know, we have been to the meeting of the conference for four years now. Right. And uh, three of those years, um, uh, I wasn't on the speaking venue, and, and I was telling Pastor Watson, I said, the unique thing about that meeting is this. When you come in and sit there with your men, 
and you're 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 soaking up the the meat of God's word that's being given from the pulpit. I found those years um, just as enriching as the, and I was very privileged sure. to get to speak at it. But so enriching from the standpoint that I mean, we were there together, we were laughing together, we were crying together, we were praising the Lord together. Amen. But the truths that were coming it comes out of the pulpit because no doubt God places on the heart of Pastor Watson the men he'll have preaching that meeting. And what, what I have found with our men is that in, in the times whenever uh, we're there together like that, there's a bonding that takes place That's because truth. what's happening is that God's Word is being right. delivered from a passionate heart of a pastor right. who has pastored men for years, who, who has seen the, the, the empowerment that a church experiences when, uh, when those men and their pastor's heart are knitted together. Right. We're living in a day and age where we hear so much about leadership. Books on leadership, conferences about it, seminars, whole nine yards. And in my opinion, this is like a, a meeting that, that, that absolutely, with a bullet, touches that subject. Because you've got pastors who are leaders of churches with men who are leaders of homes. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Hearts being knit together. And I'll be honest with you, yeah. you, you right. cannot, you can, there's not a church where God is doing mighty things that that element's missing. Absolutely. That's the truth. I think, I think it's the bedrock of what our churches are ever going to be. Whenever those hearts are knit together and we're Absolutely. on the same page, right. our church is going forward, taking ground for God. You let that relationship flip and you let there become a disconnect and that church, church is going nothing. backwards overnight. Yes. It, it, and, I, and I'll be honest with you, without fail, every time that we come back, and I'm going to tell you what happens to me as a pastor. I leave that meeting challenged for my role. Yeah, too. absolutely. I'll leave that meeting yes, thinking sir. these people deserve a better pastor. Right. I need to be that man. That's yep. right. I never leave right. there not getting That's right, right about something. That's not right. repenting oh, yeah. about something. Not, not you know, absolutely on the altar begging God. Because it just can it, it always it always continually increases in my heart my responsibility. Exactly. Right. And wow. to be a better man because they deserve a better pastor yes, than sir. they have. Yes, right. That meeting is it, it's it's become one of the highlights of our year. Our guys are already talking about it now and have been for months Thank anticipating you. February. Thank you. Absolutely. It's one of the, you know, we have our missions conference in January, but as soon as missions is over, it's all about the Mighty Men's Conference. Yes. And yeah. so we're so thankful for God burdening Pastor Watson and his hospitality in his church and the overwhelming load of responsibility and service they take on. It is an absolute blessing to our body of believers. Amen. Yeah. Yes. Amen. What about you, Brother Steve? Well, I, uh, the, the, the Pastor Mighty Men's Conference is such a... Uh, such a help to, to me and such a special place in my heart. We're, we were there for the first one and been there every year. Uh, I, I remember highlights, and I've only been at Lighthouse 12 years, but you can't get to 20 or 40 if you don't get to 12. That's, that's right. That's right. And, uh, but I, I, re I remember us coming to that, and I have highlights. I remember the first time we had somebody saved at the church, and I remember the first time you know, God showed up in a service and, and those things. But I, I'll never forget the first that first year of meeting and our men and us going and really you know it's the first year you didn't really know what to expect you know we have a good time with the Lord um, but what God did in that meeting uh, he it went from being brother Chad it went from being you know the church following the pastor that's a great thing if churches follow the pastor but it's not just about following the pastor right. it's about what can we do with the pastor that's right that's and right. i think there are men out there and I, I talked to pastors recently that i mean they they have people who kind of would say pastor you do whatever you want to do we're behind you and that's a great thing but you'll wear a man out that way yes sir but you get men who say that's my pastor that's my and that's our leader and we're going to follow him right and it's going to change and and god just I, we, our men, we, we left that first men's meeting. We had a sweetheart banquet at church that night. And we went in and we were supposed to eat steak and, you know, you have a little love devotion and go to the house. I mean, we had a meeting breakout and had a lady in our church saved and somebody saved the next day. And so, and I, I, I'm ever indebted, Brother Chad, to you just following God. Amen. And I can honestly say this, Lighthouse wouldn't be where it is today had some men not come together. And so I'm excited about this. I'm praying God do it again. Amen. And I could go on and on about things he's done, but it's it's amazing the need that it meets. And I'm, I'm praying God just bring some more guys like us in this year and to get that kind of help. You know, you know, when you have a meeting like this, a lot of times people uh, that don't know or don't understand will you know, act as if it's self-serving, you know, to, yeah. we, to we as, as pastors, as preachers. Right. In a, in a real pastor's heart, uh, it, it's not self-serving at all. Right. I mean, we're, we're servants, and we're servants to the Absolutely. to the church. Absolutely. And but we're to be the leader of the church. Absolutely, we're right. to take the oversight of the church. 
Um, the, the Apostle Peter made this statement, and, and I've, I, I've always thought of it often. It's in uh, 1 Peter chapter number 5, beginning verse 1. He said this, he said, The elders which are among you I exhort, of course he's talking about the pastors, he said, who am also an elder? Peter said, I'm, I'm one of you. He said, uh, you know, I'm a witness of the sufferings of Christ and the partaker of the glory which shall be revealed. And then he gave us this mandate. He said, our job is to feed the flock of God, Absolutely. which That's is right. among you. But yes, then he sir. said this. He said, taking the taking. oversight. That's yes. leadership. Yes, sir. He said, taking the leadership of the church but then, you know, a lot, of, a lot of times folks talk about, you know, a pastor that's a dictator of the church or who is lord over God's heritage, which is in this text. Mm -hmm. And there are some of those. Yes, you know, there, oh, are, yeah, there right. are some of those. But just because you're the leader doesn't mean you're the Lord. Yeah, that's right. There's a difference between being yeah. a leader and being Absolutely. a Lord. Right. Right. And so Absolutely. he says this, he says this, we, we, take, we take the leadership. Not by constraint. In other words, we don't force it. Yes, we sir. don't. We don't force our leadership upon the congregation. He said, "But we do it willingly." Yeah. Sure. We're not doing it for filthy lucre. We're yes, not doing sir. it for money. But we're doing it of a ready mind. Sure. And we, the ready mind, is the mind of Christ. Yes. That's what God's given us, and it's calling God's sure. put on us. And then He said this: neither being lords of God's heritage, but being in samples to the flock. Yeah. The word in sample is a stronger word than the word example. Oh, yeah, that's right. The word in sample, I love that that Elizabethan English of the King James Bible. The, the word in sample means every line, every crevice, every detail. It's a perfect. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's a perfect copy of. We're to be the perfect copy wow. to the church. What a challenge. Of what they ought to be what because we're being what God is making yes, us sir. be. That's good. And uh, I, I encourage you to come and be, tell us about when the conference is, how to get in touch with you about the conference, and uh, booking to come. Sure. The conference this year for uh, 2019 is February the 1st and 2nd. It's always the first Friday night and first Saturday in February every Amen. year. And uh, we would love, our, our goal is to have pastors bring their men. We have men coming from all over the country. We have men coming from Utah, men coming from up in Maryland, yeah. all over the place. And so our goal is for you to bring your men, come, be a part of the conference, and uh, we would be honored to serve you and to better be a help to strengthening your local Absolutely. church, and strengthening, strengthening that relationship between you and your men, because ultimately, as I said earlier, uh, some of the greatest times of revival our church has experienced is when that love for one another has no been doubt. has been no fanned. Doubt. That flame has yes. been fanned, and this 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 conference is unique in the sense is it is it it really stirs that passion and that love between the pastor and his men, Absolutely. and it just fuels the atmosphere uh, for revival and for the work of God to go forward. Okay, so we know the date. What's the times of the services? When do they begin? Friday night on February the 1st. Service will kick off at 7 o'clock. And they need to be there by what time? Mm -hmm. I would encourage you to be Five there hours. by... <laughs> three. I would encourage folks to be yeah. there at least an hour early yeah. if they want to see. Yeah. Many times uh, we... we oh, I was in the choir last year. Sure. And we yeah. packed the choir out. We have to put chairs on the platform. I'm not talking about singing in the choir. <laughs> yeah. That's where I had to sit. Sitting on sure. And then on Saturday morning, we will kick off again at 9 o'clock, and we will go through lunch. We'll feed everybody lunch, and then we normally have two preachers after lunch. We have a breakout session for all the young men. They go under the tent, and we'll have two preachers preaching directly to the young men. At That's the same great. time, we'll be having services inside. And so we'd be honored to have yes. all of the pastors who can come bring their men and let us serve you. And what church. about, I, I know that you don't provide accommodations, but what about accommodations? Where do they stay in that area? We uh, we have a couple, two or three motels there. We we book all the rooms that they have. Of course, Pastor Wells has been very very uh, humble into as to letting uh, God use the facilities here at Galilee. Right. And I appreciate your hospitality, Pastor Wells. We have about 130 men, I think, staying here at the dorms at Galilee. Right. Many are staying at the Hampton Inn, at the Fairfield Inn. We we block out all the rooms. 
and uh, and so that the pastor and his men, many of them, will share rooms together, and uh, with, that's that's the accommodations that we're able to offer for them. That is great. That is great. You'll have a uh, great great time there at the pastor and his mighty men conference. Uh, conference, Gloryland Baptist Church. Yes, sir. Hartsville, South Carolina. What's the address? Address is fifteen twenty nine West Old Camden Road. And that's in Hartsville, South Carolina. Of course, you can reach me. My my number is 843-307-8472. Say it again. 843-307-8472. Or you can email us at glorylandbaptistkjv at gmail.com. Absolutely. Get in touch with uh, Brother Chad Watson. Come and attend the pastor and his Mighty Men Conference. Until next time from here at the Higher Grounds Podcast, this is Brother Andy Wells, Brother Stephen Aldridge, and Brother Michael Poindexter, along with Brother Chad Watson. We want to say goodbye to you. You keep pressing on the upward way.